we had this idea of making a project called The Big Picture. Hi everyone, and welcome to The Rise. I'm Dr. Travis Fox, this is The Rise. Hi everyone and welcome to this week's episode of The Rise. I'm your host, Dr. Travis Fox, and guess where we are? Well, strangely enough, we're in downtown Oakland of all places. What are we here to do? Well, we're gonna introduce you to someone who's really into the big picture. Please welcome to the show, Andrew Johnston. Now, what we're gonna talk about today is he's developed an incredible program called The Big Picture, ironically, and what it's doing is taking shots from young, uh, uh, underprivileged kids, or just children at yeah, large, at really. at risk youth. At risk youth, thank you that are doing graffiti or doing tagging and teaching them with, through mentorship, through understanding about respect and character and value, to truly become artistship and also beautifying the city and it's a two-fold scenario. So, Andrew, tell me about a little bit about you. Well, I'm a, a muralist. A muralist. I, but I do a special sort of mural called trompe l'oeil, which means deceive the eye or trick the eye. Okay. And um, I tell people I've never had a real job, so I've been doing this. <laughs> we don't either. <laughs> forever. I've been, I, you know, if right. if you asked me when I was a kid what I was going to be, I was going to be an artist. When okay. I a few years ago, I needed to do a project for a, a city nearby called Livermore. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of this, we had this idea of working with kids who were graffiti offenders and getting them to participate on a mural project with me. Okay, now let me stop you. What is a graffiti offender? It's a kid who's been busted for tagging. Okay, so they've gone on and vandalized yeah. a wall or yeah, a street got or someone. by the police. Okay, so they, they feel divorced from society, right. and this and and they're frustrated, and this is literally their writing back to society. The thing that makes the human beings different than any other species in the world is that at one point in our development we picked up a rock and hit another rock with it. What we are, the fact, thing that defines us as a species is tool using, we're habilis. And it's so deep within us, it's, it's in, ingrained in our DNA, it's an instinct. Every bit as powerful as a bird flying south for the winter. And we've taken it away from our education system piece by piece. They just, they just want to go out and paint, you know? They want to go, through, they want to risk it. It made me look at art in a different perspective. If we're not finding a, a way to give them options how to express themselves, we're still, we're still in the same place. Right. You have to have an outlet, and, and there's no outlet because even with the areas that they have, right. they're not giving them, you know, the, the opportunity to express it. Right. So here's some other facts about the graffiti industry in the big picture we probably should know. We didn't know them here at the Rise. We thought we would pass them along to you. Besides the 20 billion a year that we spend just covering up this graffiti to make it look prettier, did you know that 412 million cans of spray paint are produced every year just here in the United States? An average can does approximately 25 square feet of propellant. If you take all of those cans, you put it together, it's approximately 10 trillion with a T, 10 trillion square feet a year or 369 square miles of spray paint or propellant that we produce just in the United States every year. One other fact that we found interesting is that approximately 70% of the propellant is what actually hits the surface that it's intended to hit. The other 30% goes there. The country's paying $20 billion a year because of that. I'm sorry, did you say 20 billion yeah. with a B? Yeah, that's a, that's a national, that's a national figure. Um, it's four times the amount of money we we spend on property on uh, vehicle theft in the United States. Here again 412 million cans a year that cannot be recycled. Two, it's an explosive. And three, this is what's contributing and allowing these kids to get into graffiti, get into the artwork that's actually hurting us long term. It's astronomical, people. It's time we rise up, take a look at our environment, look at the money we're spending, and help these kids. That's something to get rised up about. Check it out. If, if you took a $100 bill, and a $100 bill, and a $100 bill, a million dollars is 43 inches. From ground up. From ground up. Right. $20 billion would be 73,000 feet tall in $100 bills. 73. Yeah, thousand. that's twice as high as an aircraft flies. If you stepped off that pile, it'd take you seven and a half minutes to reach the ground without a parachute. 
fall into free, full speed. Free fall. <laughs> we got an issue here. Now, I think and worldwide, it's a hundred billion dollars. So you're in space. Literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, a lot of money. Now, speaking of money, though, it's my understanding the big project is a charitable organization. Yeah. Does anybody in your staff get paid? No. We donate every hour of what we do. We, we, we do it because it needs to be done and we love doing it. We developed the idea of the big picture. And the idea of the big picture is, of course, it's a play on words because we're painting giant paintings. Right, of course. But also we need to set them right. within the greater context of art. Okay. And we, they are a part of the big picture whether they know it or not. Right. It's about them making art without victims. Any time that you make a victim, that's bad mojo for an artist. Right. And uh, it's all about permission and respect. Uh, we teach these kids how to stretch their own canvas, gesso their own canvas, we introduce them to galleries. And we say, you, you were lucky enough to be born with talent. Right. Um, now, what are you going to do with it? What's interesting I found about the, the big picture when we, were, when, we were, when we were researching the project is that you're also working with cities now to where these kids go from this to this, but then they have a public forum to do it. Tell us how you're having the city integrate the rehabilitation of these children. Cities in the past have worked on catching them and punishing them. Right. That's what the, yeah, the your bag. Yeah. Go to juvenile center. And what we're trying to do is get that focus changed. Okay. And we're saying that's the wrong way to go. Nowadays, I mean, I think kids just don't have nothing to do, so. Mm -hmm. They just, they just want to go out and paint, you know? He made me believe in myself and believe in my community again. And um, he made me look at life in a different way. There's still beauty offered in the world if you want to create it. Uh, so we we had this vision about providing employment for youth in our neighborhood and doing a lot of environmental stuff along with it. And so this element now prevents uh, us from having to talk to kids about something that we don't know about, that we'd like to do, but we don't have expertise in it. So we found by connecting with people like Andrew around education, art, uh, positive activity in neighborhoods, preventing gun violence, preventing homicides, preventing uh, uh, asthma, uh, diabetes, changing your nutrition, exercise, all of these elements which make a, a person more well-rounded as well as education and achieving higher levels of um, success for people is, is a lot of work, but you need experts that can come in and do this kind of work. And Andrew for us has been a real key. We're not cops, we're not teachers, uh, we're not social workers, uh, we're not mom or dad, we're other artists. And we uh, put our arm across their shoulder. You, there's a double entendre here, and when you talk about the talent, the big picture obviously is they're drawing big pictures, go figure. Right. Uh, the big picture of, like you said, is there a third one that says the big picture of life? Their life at large, the big picture sure. of their own life. Because part of what I think you might want to understand here with the audience is the big picture is, is instilling these values. It's got a self-confidence angle, and it's got this, as you said, the breaks to it. Mm. Tell me a little bit about how you help develop them from the inside before they can express outside. We're coming to this with empathy, with mm -hmm. compassion and respect. And we're saying it's not what you're doing, we respect that, it's where you're doing it that's the problem. Right. So we, you know, we just kind of get them to shift a little bit that compass point and things go well for them. They can make a career as an artist. So if you don't mind me using it, like, you're helping them rise up. We're going to help them rise up. Yeah, forgive the shameless plug. Yeah. The big picture, <laughs> rising up, going from the inside and out. Yeah. Now, what you're seeing behind us here, this is obviously what someone who's gone from this shot right over here yeah. Who is, look, I guess it's graffiti or tagging, is it the right term, uh, is that right? Yeah. And you turn into something like this. Now, if you're mentoring them, how do you help them go from that to that? Because obviously they've got talent, but this is obviously a very focused, extraordinary yeah. talent, whereas we're just doing something quick and we're in and out. We challenge them. How so? We, it's, we throw the softball and we wait for them to hit it. They've got the capacity. They've just never had the opportunity. Okay. So we give them a forum to show off. Okay. Art is about showing off a lot. <laughs> okay, fair right? enough. You, you, you paint something, you may paint it. Right. Well, in, here it is. In, 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 in a quiet place, but eventually you put it up, up, right. up for public view. Look, look what I did. And the other thing is that these kids have, have always worked cryptically. They've um, hidden their name in, 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 in script 
and done, the, done their work at night when they're not going to get caught and in alleyways. And we put them on show, right? And so literally pushing them into light, if you, yeah. again, if you don't mind. And not only that, at the end of the week, um, I ask their permission to sign their, my name alongside theirs on the project. Okay. Why uh, do you do that? It's important that they sign their work. Okay. Because they need to, need to, it needs to mark their place and time, and they need to step back away from it. Okay. But to do, although I've contributed to it, I, th I think that they own it. Sure. And I'm the guest. They're not my guest. They're doing the piece of art. I'm just showing them how. Right. So a nice little transition from, hey, this is your name versus yeah. signing your name to something. Else. Yeah, and you can stop. Step back away from it, and you can point to it, and you can go, I did this, and I'm proud of it. You become an artist that you leave a signature, and this is his signature, so they respect that, and so they're giving the, the kids opportunity to see that these artists are really, you know, what they stand for. So if you tag over it, then it, it, it depreciates what it, what it is, so they've respected him enough to leave it as is, and not even, you know, so it's in a great place, and you can see with his art, his art, you know, anytime you're coming through here, so it's a great piece to have, and no one has destroyed it. So that's what we're trying to get, give them areas where they can, explore who they are and what they're about without destroying each other's artwork. It doesn't work unless everybody comes along together. Right. Uh, the, only, the only way you can have people break out of underachieving is to create huge, huge mountains of success. And that means everybody has a potential. Wow. And they've never had an art lesson in their life, but they've got this instinct within them right. that's demanding that it be you know, it needs a fruition. Right. It needs to, they need to do this. And if they're not given a positive direction, they'll find a negative outlet. Sure. And we wanted to do something very unique in our community, an element that was missing. We do the fundamentals about going to work, uh, reporting to work, dressing properly, safety, but the educational part was missing. There's kids who are doing great big pieces and they're really intricate, involved, quite beautiful. Um, it's the wrong place, but the, the, you know. And then there's um, there's the, the gang graffiti, which is you know territorial marking, and then there's tagging. But I think the for me, see, I'm not opposed to graffiti as an art style. I'm opposed to graffiti as vandalism as in a lifestyle. And the only difference is permission, and this is permitted. So, and it's also because they've got time to work. They do these extraordinary paintings. And I think this is every bit as valid as any museum in town, including the MoMA. I think it's extraordinary. I mean, I, from looking just at the, the couple pieces here and, and even this, I mean, yeah. this didn't happen overnight. No, I no, I mean, no. Some, someone obviously took a lot of time to put yeah. this together. So if this is permitted mural art, yeah. as you said, then what's this? What am I looking at? That's, a, ta that's a tag. That is a disrespectful tag on top of somebody else's stuff. OK, so this is what we're trying to get these artists yeah. right over here to go from this to transition to more like this and right. through the big project. Kick the game up a notch. That's all, that's all it is. It's kicking the game up a notch and raising the sights and establishing their, their art within the general picture of, of art history. Right. And if they, can, if they condemn it to obscurity, it will never be a part of art history. Right. It becomes so, lost. So, uh, so a place like this, obviously, I mean, there's people walking around, there's cars going by. This really is kind of an outdoor, for lack of definition, museum. So instead yeah. of condemning their art, like you said, to this, where it's going to get painted over, this will be gone in whatever, maybe a week, yeah. hopefully, you know. This, but this is street art. The, the only difference between graffiti and street art is, is permission. Right. And so this is, a, this is a, a street that's dedicated as a community mural project. Right. So street artists come from all over the city and do their thing. If, if, it's, if you say, could you please come and paint on my fence, then go ahead. Okay. If somebody comes and paints on your fence and doesn't ask you, then it's a problem. Right. So and that's the only thing. We're looking at this. This is obviously art. Yes. And it was permitted. Yes. And yet, three feet away... There's this thing, right? There's this thing. Right. So the big picture is trying to get the, the, the young artists that can do this. And through the, right. through the mentorship and through the training, through the whole process, you right. really take these things to get to something like this. This is amazing. This is bloody rude, right? right. It's rude. You're doing the respect, disrespecting. We don't even say, look, all the time, the, the conversation starts with, is it art? Right. Um, we take that away from, we don't start with that as a premise. Okay. We say everything is art. So when does everything is art become wrong? 
not bad, because it's good art, but it's wrong art. When does it become wrong art? And it becomes wrong when it's on somebody else's stuff. That's it. I was pretty lost um, when I was younger. I got into like a lot of trouble doing graffiti, getting into trouble doing drugs, drinking, just being troubled youth, I guess. And uh, I joined this program that he was teaching and he just changed my life. It's an instinct with these kids and it needs an outlet. And if it isn't given a, a positive outlet, it'll find a negative one. So what we do is we come to them with, it, with empathy and consideration and we go, okay, what about doing this? And we show them some techniques. We say that you're, you know, a, a spray can isn't a reasonable thing to make art with, but it's not the only thing to make art with. Here's a brush, here's some proper paint. And there's a great, there's a, as, a, as an artist, there's a, there's a really wonderful thing about standing in front of a white, freshly gessoed canvas that you've stretched yourself. It's a real, it's a, a zen experience. Mm. And you kind of make that first mark on it and it's, it's intoxicating. And these kids, the first time they do it, they go, oh. A lot of them are frightened. And I say, just walk up to it and just stab it with your brush. Make a mark and then start to make a painting. And they, they we, you know, we, these kids, tend not to show up for school <laughs> and we're doing a we do a project and we show up at eight o'clock and they've been there for three quarters of an hour waiting wow. and they won't leave at the end of the day wow. they're just in it they're just committed This is what we're going to do. We're going to, right now, we're going to paint a globe. Yeah. I think this guy. <laughs> and this yeah. is what ultimately we're going to put on here. Mm -hmm. So all, this is all going to be black. I did this because I'm not, you know, I don't own HP, so we have to yeah. watch it with the black. <laughs> so there's really two paintings. There's, we will paint a globe, yeah. and then we, we we leave enough room to put the the re recycle symbol. And I did the recycle symbol like 3D. Yeah. And then we and then we we put the put the respect on. And when we do this, what we'll do is we'll use a digital projector and we'll project it on. That way we get it perfect. Right? And you can see that when we do it, we have to airbrush it here and keep it light here. Yeah. So it'll, it'll look like it's coming through our, an abyss. Yeah. So, all right, we're good? Yeah, sounds good. All right, let's start touching this thing up. Two of those. Got to have right. your weedies. There you go. Get it with the edge of your brush yeah. and get it in. Yeah, man, real life. What's really going on? We're really in Union City right now. About to paint this world. You're gonna see it all happen. Honestly, I don't know if I can. I, I, I'm a pretty good artist, I think. I painted a few times. Got a couple of compliments, and I thought I was good, so I don't know. I wanna wait to see if he lets me paint, and then let's see what he has to say. I mean, you know, I already messed up. It's not the kids that are screwed up, it's society that's failed them. Yeah. They should have provided art education in schools. And the problem is that we've got no art education in schools and they, they got it, they've got this instinct, this need to do, and so it comes out like that. So that's what happened. Yeah man, definitely. I'm with you on that. Came at the right time in my life because I was pretty lost. I'd do anything to help the community and help kids. I've always wanted to to teach art classes to kids, because um, I believe they just need one positive influence to change their life. Like, I was so lost, and I had that one positive influence, and it changed me, and I'm so much, I'm, I'm a way better person now. Um, I don't really know how to explain it. So we brought the element of work through recycling, and training, mm -hmm. and educational opportunities, but now we're bringing this element of uh, art, which I think is a real important aspect of people's growth. Mm -hmm. And so it's something that Andrew brings to the table. And it's an element that he really perseveres in, and we're really excited about it. It's a great opportunity. We're also talking to other communities surrounding our community. And through the supervisor seat, we have access to uh, a lot more resources and, right. and more a higher population. Well, what's the real big picture? How do we solve this problem? You know, one of the things that we've always wondered is, how do we cause a, a solution, as opposed to just pointing out the problem? 
Well, we think that the big picture has definitely created a solution-oriented situation for all of us. The problem is how do we fund it? Well, we came up with an idea here at the rise in the big picture that we thought that would really solve that problem, and it requires all of us. For us to ask people to stop using spray paint is probably unreasonable. Well, for us to ask the companies that manufacture spray paint and say, hey, by the way, uh, you need to stop doing that, that's probably unreasonable. I think we all agree that either a state or a federally funded program is probably not going to work as well. So what if we did this? Every time someone buys one of these, even the people that are doing this kind of artwork, what if we ask the companies that manufacture these to add 35 cents to each can? What does that do? Well, that 35 cents would go into a dedicated fund for places like the big picture where we could put arts and crafts back into the schools. It's up to us to rise up to make this situation happen. And 35 cents for every time we buy one of these, even if those who are doing the graffiti is still funding and solving our problem. That way we're all doing it together and who knows, maybe one, 100, 1,000, 10,000 other young artists go from this to going to true artists and making the world a better place. That's the big picture. Well, I'm Dr. Travis Fox. This is The Rise. We want to thank everybody for once again joining us. Make sure you look about that 35 cents and maybe the next time you buy one of these, think about arts and crafts and helping change a young person's life. It's time to fade to black.